So you're running a business or even working a nine to five and you're making money, but you don't have nearly as much free time as you would like. You want to scale your business and make even more money, but you want free time just as much or even more. So is it possible to both make more money and be working less hours every week while making more money? Well, it absolutely is possible. And I am evidence of this with this platform right here called onlinejobs.ph. And in this video, I'm going to show you exactly how to use onlinejobs.ph to find high quality, top-notch, inexpensive virtual assistants that are going to then ultimately free up your time and help you scale your business at the exact same time. This platform and literally what I'm about to share with you has completely changed Ali and I's lives and our business. And this is pretty much a necessary step that every entrepreneur will need to take. And if you like the video, be sure to give it a thumbs up, drop a comment with any questions that you have along the way, and consider hitting that red subscribe button on your screen for more tips and tutorials like this that you won't find anywhere else. Now, everyone who watches this video is going to be at a different level. So if this is not your first time hiring a VA and you've done this before and just wanna know exactly how the platform of onlinejobs.ph works, I'll be including chapters in the description section of this video. So you can just go ahead and skip to that specific section of the video so I don't waste any of your time. But if this is your first time hiring a VA or virtual assistant ever, then you'll definitely wanna make sure you watch through the entire video. I promise it's gonna be worth your while. And with that being said, let's go ahead and get to it. First, what is onlinejobs.ph? Very simply, it's the largest virtual assistant network in the Philippines. So if you wanna find a Filipino virtual assistant, this is your go-to place. So onlinejobs.ph, the PH stands for Philippines. Okay, so it's exclusively currently for the Philippine marketplace. So why would we hire from the Philippines? Well, there are multiple reasons why, and I'll share with you kind of my top reasons here. So number one is that the Philippines is one of the most westernized countries in East Asia, up there with South Korea and Singapore. So there's a lot of English speakers. There's a lot of cultural overlap. A lot of Filipinos actually are very familiar with a lot of different American culture when it comes to music or movies and other kind of cultural aspects as well. Number two, is that the Philippines is considered a quote unquote developing country. And because of this, the US dollar has much stronger power in these types of markets. And then number three is overall quality of the candidates that you get. Again, I'm not knocking on any other country, whether it's Pakistan or India or East Europe or Latin America or anywhere else in the world, you can find amazing candidates in any country. So I'm not discriminating here. Um, however, from our experience, we have found that we've have some really great quality candidates coming out of the Philippines directly, which is why we focus more of our resources there. And it's a whole reason why this company, onlinejobs.ph, specifically focuses on the Philippines. So with that out of the way, the next logical question is, all right, what tasks should I outsource first or next? And what you can do is access this free Google spreadsheet that I've made for you. Link to this will be in the description section of this video. Once you click on the link, Go up to the top left, click on file, make a copy to make your very own copy. And what you'll do with this spreadsheet is on the far left side here in column A, is simply list out all of the tasks that you execute on daily, weekly, monthly, quarterly, or annual basis, right? Basically those tasks that you have to do to keep your business running or they have to do in your nine to five job and list everything out. Even if you don't think it can be outsourced, list everything out. As you see, I even have traveling by plane over here, which I'll talk about in a second, listed here, right? So I, even if I could outsource that, right, I would try to find a way to do so. So some of these things may be a little bit more difficult to outsource. You can't really outsource it, but there's a lot that you can. So it's not holding back, list everything that you have to do, the repeatable tasks, okay? Number two is to rate each of those tasks. And what I like to do is rate them on a scale of one to five. One being, I hate doing this. I really wish I didn't have to do this, but I have to to keep my business alive. And then number five is, I love this. I really find fulfillment and enjoyment from this task. You know, I don't really want to outsource it because I really enjoy it. So once you rate each of the tasks here, it'll automatically populate here on the right-hand side. And what we want to focus on is now we have right here, you see on the screen, is a complete list of all the tasks that we have to execute on a daily, weekly, monthly, quarterly, or annual basis, okay? And specifically in these columns, H and I, these are all the tasks that we have to do and that we hate, okay? So this is where you wanna start, right? And you can do, you can go to all of these columns, right? You can go all the way up here to neutral as well, it does not matter, but especially here is where I'd recommend starting is look at these individual tasks and for each task, 
you're going to do is have like a notebook out or just kind of think in your head like, okay, if I went to my local college or high school and I record a video of myself doing each of these tasks, okay, and then showed it to that high school student or that college student, would they be able to perform that task? Basically, the idea here is of the things that you have to do, what are those things that you dislike and that basically anyone could do, right? Maybe not an eight-year-old kid, but like a young high school kid, a teenager could do. Um, that's a really great gut check to where it's like, okay, if a high schooler could do this, right? And I could train them, I could find a VA and I could probably find them inexpensively because it doesn't require as much skill set. Once you start moving into like video editing, copywriting, content creation, things like that, those require more skills. The more skilled you want to hire for, the more expensive it's going to be. The easier the tasks are, like I said, if you could hire a teenager to do it, the cheaper it's going to be. For these general type of tasks, sort of that lowest level task that you want to outsource, I found that you can usually get a very good virtual assistant for about $6 an hour, right? And I'm talking about a very good virtual assistant that catches things that you don't catch, that gives you improvement, right? Way better than a teenager or a high school or college student in the United States and can pay them for significantly less and get way better results. And by the way, um, when hiring VAs, I highly recommend, number one, whatever you're hiring for, find these tasks that are similar. So in this case, we're gonna look through any of these tasks that we could find a high school student to do them, right? All those basic tasks. Some of them are a little bit more advanced, so we're gonna exclude them. We just wanna find those basic tasks and we're gonna lump them all together and create a job description with all of those tasks. Basically, we're gonna find one person if you know the hours permit to take all those tasks and they're gonna do all of those things. Even if they're seemingly unrelated, as long as they're pretty simple and anyone can do them, that one VA that you're gonna hire, that first one, is gonna do all of these basic essential tasks. And that's your best kind of first hire. And then after that, maybe you move on to you know video editing, social media marketing, email marketing, or copywriting, blog writing, whatever it might be, right? You'll move up the ladder, but that's a really great place to start, okay? And when hiring, right? So you'll find the tasks, group them together, and then you're like, okay, so if it's general stuff, it's a general VA, you know, personal assistant, virtual assistant, um, things like that, those very basic kind of words, go on Google and then search for, you know, general VA um, salary Philippines, right? And you can look at the different ranges. I recommend paying on the higher end. So $6 an hour or even $5 an hour is a little bit on the higher end for a general virtual assistant. But whenever hiring in a kind of developing country or in kind of one of these less uh, expensive marketplaces, I really recommend going on the higher end, okay? To put in perspective, so those of you who subscribe to the channel know that my wife and I, Ali, um, travel the world. We don't have a house, we live in Airbnbs. And right now we're literally in Bali, Indonesia. And whenever we're looking for Airbnbs in some of these more quote unquote developing nations that are a little bit cheaper to live in comparatively to the United States, we always get more expensive, you know, Airbnbs and food and everything. Even though it's still cheaper, we go on the higher end because uh, we want to make sure that we get the best quality possible. We still save money and the quality could be even better than the United States. So it's the same idea here with the Philippines. If you try to penny pinch and pay the least amount of money, you're going to get bad results. And you're going to say, hey, Sumner, I hired someone on onlinejobs.ph and they were terrible. Okay. The key is always high on the higher end. You're still going to pay less than someone in the United States or in the UK or Europe or wherever. And the quality is going to be way better. Okay. So just kind of have that perspective in mind. I just want to kind of call that out. The next thing you want to make sure that you're doing is tracking all of your time. I personally like to use a free tool called toggle.com. This is both a web application and an app. And basically what you can do is just very efficiently track how long each of these tasks take you. So how long does it take to respond to customers every day or to create content? or whatever else it might be, you can literally track every day, every week, or every month, how long each task takes. So you know, okay, if it takes me, you know, an hour to do this task every week, it'll likely take my VA about an hour to do this task. So you kind of know exactly how many hours to hire for or how much to pay per week. Otherwise, you're just kind of shooting in the dark. So very important, even before you're hiring, make sure that you're tracking your time using a tool like Toggle. And I know that everything that we've discussed so far seems like quite a bit of work, uh, to kind of put together, but it's absolutely worthwhile. And it's going to make kind of creating your job description much, much easier because you know exactly how many hours it takes, exactly what tax there are and everything like that, right? And it's very, very critical that you do so. So once you run through all the process thus far, the next step is to create a job description that we will first create here in Google Docs or uh, with whatever kind of tool you want to use and then post onto onlinejobs.ph, which I'll show you how to do. So it's kind of doing all this prep work and then going on to onlinejobs.ph and then it becomes very, very fast. So 
Again, you can also access this free virtual assistant job description in the description section of this video as well. It comes in the form of a Google Doc. Again, you can go to file and then make a copy, just like with the Google spreadsheet. And this is actually a real job that we posted a while back and actually hired for, and we're very, very happy with the candidate that we have uh, ultimately brought onto our team, doing really great work. So this is for a social media position, but what you can do is just read through everything and then just delete and fill in for yourself. But I find having a real example is much better than just having a blank template. So first things first, we have the overview. So just what's the summary? You know, who are you hiring for? Why are you hiring? What kind of work are they going to be do? How many hours? You know, all of that, just a general kind of overview. In this case, like I said, it's for a social media manager. Next, after the overview, we're going to have tasks. So again, we already identified the tasks. So literally just kind of copy and paste each of those tasks from your Google spreadsheet here into the Google Doc and edit it to make it sound a little bit nicer, a little bit more professional, make sure there's no grammatical errors. And you can kind of see that here, right? So, you know, creating graphics using existing Canva templates, schedule content in advance using later, create captions uh, for scheduled posts, hashtag research with flick.tech, sharing YouTube videos on Facebook page, right? Being very, very specific about every single task. Okay, you're not just gonna hire someone and then tell them, hey, uh, go make me money. Uh, hey, go create social media content. When hiring virtual assistants, First of all, you need to know exactly um, you know, how long everything takes and exactly what they're doing. And then you're going to teach them exactly how to do these things. Um, if you don't want to do that, then what you're going to have to do is hire an expensive freelancer who still may not even perform better, even paying them more and everything. So uh, it's a little bit of effort and work. It is so much more worth it going this route, in my opinion, than hiring a lot of expensive consultants or freelancers. There's a time and place for all of that. Of course, you definitely want to make sure you're hiring specialists internally into your team, as well as kind of using them externally with different agencies or consultants. But for a lot of tasks and for the bulk of it, you can create systems here and outsource inexpensively uh, with virtual assistants from onlinejobs.ph. After you've listed all of the tasks, include requirements, which you can kind of copy and paste here. So of course, speak and write in fluent English, very important. Um, you know, experience using uh, X, Y, and Z tools. If you use Slack, then they need to be familiar with Slack, with email, right? Pretty standard. Um, also, a very common requirement that we have for all of our virtual assistants is at least one year minimum of experience. Okay, think about like someone, if someone's worked for less than a year, like two months, even six months in a position, are they really good in that position? You know, they're kind of brand new. Do you really want to be hiring that or do you want someone with more experience, right? You know, working as a virtual assistant, period, who knows exactly kind of, they work with other clients, they know kind of what to expect to be on time, how to communicate, all of that, as well as the actual work that they need to do. So we expect at least one years of experience. Ideally two is, is great. So if they have two or more years, that's amazing, but at least one year is kind of our minimum. And you can kind of read through that here. Um, you know, what you provide to them. So if there's certain tools, do they need to have tools on their end? Or are you going to provide that for them? You know, training, is that going to be paid or do you going to have to do it for free? It's up to you. We pay for training. Um, a lot of the tools we kind of, um, provide that to the user. So like our VPN software, we have an account and we let them use that. Our, you know, Amazon account, we give them access to that, all of that. Okay, so what's provided to the VA? Next, we have hours. So how many hours are they going to work per week or per month? Doesn't really matter either way. Uh, so we'll say 10 hours a week. What is the rate? In this case, for this uh, virtual assistant, again, we're hiring at the higher end. Um, and that's $14 an hour or $560 a month, which is 100% worth it to us. And then also another little gold tip here is how to respond. So number one, tell them, hey, reply to this job posting with a link to your resume and portfolio. And the golden tip here that I want to share with you is right here in number two, is we always have a secret word that we have applicants reply with uh, when they apply for our uh, job posting. In this case, it's watermelon. So include the word watermelon in your response. So why would we do this, right? Because we want to see who's paying attention. Think about it. If you get 200 job applications, right? That's a lot of work to go through all 200 job applications. There should be an efficient way to get rid of all of the, you know, the, the fake applicants or the applicants that are just, you know, garbage, that are just wasting your time, right? Because there are certain virtual assistants or even just people who aren't virtual assistants. Every time someone posts a job, they just send in the resume and portfolio to everything. It doesn't matter what the job posting is. They just send it in hoping that they get hired, which is just a horrible strategy. And obviously you don't want to waste your time. So what you can do, and I'll show you how to do this in a later step is when you're going through and actually, you know, going on onlinejobs.ph, which I promise we'll go here in just a second. And all, if they don't respond with the word watermelon, boom, just immediately ignore and move to the next. Because if they didn't take the time to read your job description fully, they're absolutely going to mess up when you hire them. I promise you, I would bet so much money on that, right? I, out of a hundred bets, I would make so much money. 
Um, so, you know, not every time, but the vast majority of times. If, if they, you know, the way that they respond to your job posting, if there's, you know, grammatical errors, they don't have the word watermelon in there. You know, you told them to, to send a link to your resume and a portfolio and they didn't. Or in some cases, they'll send a link, you know, a Google Drive link or a Dropbox link to their portfolio and you click on it and they didn't give you access to share. It's those little things with grammatical errors and, and all of those little things that can kind of tell you right off the bat if this candidate is going to be good or not. And I promise you nine times out of 10, it is true. Like if they mess up in those little things, they're definitely going to mess up in the big things with your business. So you definitely don't want to hire them. And this is kind of a little hack to save you time. And we found that even up to 60% or more of applicants will not include the secret word, even when you list it out right here very plainly. So if you have 200 applicants, right, they have to go through, but a hundred of them, let's say, don't have the word watermelon. That's a hundred, you know, applicants that you don't have to go through. Otherwise you would have wasted your time going through each and reading through each. You just kind of ignore. So it saves you a lot of time. It makes things much more efficient. So um, again, you can access this for free in the description section. And yes, now that all of this is done, let's go ahead and actually dive into onlinejobs.ph platform. So head over to onlinejobs.ph. And once you get there, you have the option to either sign up as a virtual assistant or as an employer. And of course you want to go ahead and create a free employer account. So Create your account. It's super basic information. If you have questions, let me know in the comments, but it should be very, very straightforward. And the key here is once you sign up for your account, it's free, but it's extremely limited. Okay. When you actually want to go hire a virtual assistant, what you'll need is a pro account. And I'll show you here when I go to billing. So the pro account is simply $69 per month. And basically what that means is when you send out your job application, a bunch of people will actually see your job application immediately and apply. Okay, so you look at the free version, but really if you actually wanna hire someone and you're dedicated and you have a real business that you wanna hire and scale for, it's 100% worth the $69 a month. And the key here is you don't need to keep paying every month. So each month that you need to hire, if you're just getting started with one VA for now, you're like, okay, I'm gonna do this whole thing. I know I need to with my business. Let me go ahead and hire a virtual assistant um, and just stick with that for this for like one month, then pay for the month and then cancel so you don't get charged for the next coming months, right? So you basically only pay $69 one time to hire that virtual assistant. Or if you wanna be strategic, you could hire maybe a couple of virtual assistants at the same time. Uh, just make sure you allocate the proper time and resources and everything for that. Uh, you could hire potentially two or three virtual assistants or even more within one month and only pay $69. So the $69 is basically access to the entire kind of virtual assistant network uh, that they have in the Philippines once you post a job, it gets instantly viewed by all of these um, applicants. It's a very, very fast process. And I'll show you, once you post a job, uh, immediately you'll start receiving applications. And usually, definitely within five to seven days, uh, it'll kind of fill up. You'll have a maximum of 200 applications. So basically, once 200 people actually apply for your position, then it kind of automatically shuts off. In a lot of cases, you won't really meet that 200 threshold unless you're like, you know, paying a really, really high uh, amount per hour or whatever that might be, which has happened in a couple of cases for us. But in general, 200 is plenty of applicants to go through. Trust me, I, I don't want 200 applicants. I want, you know, only 10 of the best to apply, right? That's the ideal. So uh, that's kind of how it works. And that's kind of the big question people have is there's the free account. You can go through and look th through it yourself, but it's very, very limited. Um, if you actually want to hire, then you'll want to get the, uh, the paid account, but only do it for the months that you need it. And just make sure that you do Cancel because we actually forgot to in a couple of these months and ended up paying, but even then it's still worth it. And a little food for thought is there are companies that will pay headhunters or agencies tens of thousands to even hundreds of thousands of dollars just to find the right employee for their position. Now, keep in mind, these are usually for C-level type positions, you know, CTO, CFO, CEO, but still with that in mind, right, is $70 really worth paying to find the right virtual assistant for your position? And the answer is undoubtedly yes. We've hired multiple um, virtual assistants through onlinejobs.ph and every month that we do so, we pay and we're extremely happy with it. And we're actually really thankful it's not even higher because I'd be willing to pay $200 for this. And if you're at the point where you're like, wow, $70 is a little bit too much for our business to pay in order to find a virtual assistant, my recommendation would be it is not the right time for you to find virtual assistants. Instead, consider staying up a little bit later, getting up a little bit earlier, cutting the fat of all the tasks that aren't driving profit for your business and generate more profit, uh, you know, work your butt off and then get that money and then take that and invest it into virtual assistants, uh, which is exactly kind of what we did. So uh, just some food for thought, totally up to you as well. And aside from online jobs at PH, I also like using Fiverr, Upwork, FreeUp, and freelancer.com. Those are some other good options as well. 
because when you're hiring, maybe it makes sense to take that job description, which I'm going to show you how to do, and then post on all platforms. But a lot of times I start with onlinejobs.ph. If in any case, I couldn't find a really good candidate here, then I'll look at the other platforms. We could absolutely kind of do all at the same time. All right. So once you have your account officially created, what you're going to do is click on post a job. Once you do so, you're essentially going to go back to your handy dandy job description and copy and paste over the data more or less. So we go back here to our uh, job information. So for job title, you're going to make this up. It's whatever is kind of very descriptive to this position. I'm going to hover over here and kind of see um, exactly kind of some different uh, options here. So we're going to say, you know, general VA or general virtual assistant for weekly e-commerce tasks, type of employment. Are they full-time, you know, 40, 50 hours a week, part-time, you know, 10 hours, 20 hours, et cetera, or freelance, right? So we'll say part-time. For the job description, same idea here. Just go through the data you've already input. And we're going to go ahead and paste the job description. There we go. Beautiful. Look through to make sure everything looks good. For a wage or salary, I like to have, you know, dollar per hour. So it'll be like, let's say like five. There we go. Five USD per hour. And make sure you specify US dollar because obviously in the Philippines, it's Filipino peso. So... US dollar peso, very, very different. You know, 2000 pesos is very different from 2000 US dollars, right? So you wanna make sure that you are very, very specific here. For required ID proof, virtual assistants on the back end, when they apply to become members of onlinejobs.ph, have to input um, their personal data, right? And, and the more basically proof that they submit, the higher their score becomes. So the higher the score means the more likelihood this is a legitimate person. Uh, the lower the score, if we see here like 30, 40, et cetera, uh, they could be a scammer or they could just not have enough information for you to make an educated decision on moving forward with them in the process. Essentially, to keep it simple, I haven't hired anyone that's less than uh, ID proof of 70. I haven't hired someone who has an ID proof of 70 and they're amazing. So what we wanna do is select ID proof score of 70. So people who can apply need to have at least 70 or higher up to like 99 um, before we kind of hire them, right? We have email contact person. So, you know, if they want to reach out to you, uh, there's your email and that's the name. So in this case, Sumner Hobart for job skills. And this is actually a great place to go as well. Even if you're not planning on hiring yet, you can kind of go down here and see here's all of the different options that you can hire from on online jobs at PH specifically. So writing, sales and marketing, advertising, graphics and multimedia, et cetera. So in this case for a general, the, here we go, it would just be office and admin, you know, really general, uh, and then here we go. Within that, then you can kind of drill down. So is, is it more of a personal assistant? Is it an administrative assistant? In our case, it was more admin. So there we go. You can have secondary skills uh, and additional secondary skills, but uh, it's up to you, right? It kind of depends. If I was hiring, let's say this, I'll show you this. Uh, video editor, let's see, what would that be? Graphics and multimedia. And we want video editing, right? Then I'm not gonna make sure a secondary skill might be, let me go to graphics and multimedia. So we'll say maybe Photoshop, right? We want someone who's good at video editing and then Photoshop for thumbnails. Let's just say that, right? That's kind of where you would use it. Otherwise, you can just keep it as one. So just kind of look through everything. You have the title, type of employment, the entire job description, which is super important. That's where they're going to learn basically how they're going to get paid and everything. Uh, salary, all of that, skills. Go ahead and click on post a job. And obviously I'm not going to do that because this is just a demo and this is actually a real account, one of our accounts that we use. So once you post a job and you have your professional account, it's immediately going to start getting seen uh, by applicants in the Philippines. Keep in mind the time difference. It's almost like night and day kind of difference uh, in the Philippines versus different time zones in the United States, for example. So kind of keep that in mind. What I like to do is as soon as I hit the post a job button, I like to wait anywhere from five days to seven days to give enough time to make sure that we get enough applicants in. Because obviously the more applicants we have to choose from, the better our chances are of finding that really stellar, amazing virtual assistant. So once we hit post, wait a little bit. And then what we're going to do, go back to your account, click on messages. And then here in the messages tab is where you're actually going to see the responses or the messages in response to your job posting, right? And you can actually kind of see it right here. So in this case, this is for the most recent position, which is the video editor. You can kind of see here all the way through. So what you're going to do is kind of one by one, quickly review each application. So we'll click here uh, for this first. So we open the message and in this case, right? Like I said, we always have a secret word. The secret word here was the most, arguably the most popular food in uh, the Philippines, which is mm. adobo. So right off the bat, 
He has the secret word here at the top. He has a link to his resume and sample videos, as well as a couple of the most recent videos that he's edited on YouTube for this video editor position. So this is really good. Let's say I like it. I'm gonna go back. I'm gonna click on this pin right here and I can actually add a note and say, you know, I usually just pin because I already know, but let's say um, top video editor candidate, hit pin. And it's automatically added here on the left-hand side to my pinned candidates. So if you see anyone that really stands out, they're like, whoa, I really like their work or I really like how professional they were in the response and their portfolio and all of that, you can go ahead and add them to pinned. And as we go through here, I'm actually gonna give some real examples. So I asked for resume and portfolio link. There's no resume or portfolio here. Okay, they did say Adobe, which is good. That's the secret word, but there's no portfolio or resume. So this person we're just gonna ignore, hit next and move on to the next, right? So anytime that someone doesn't have a secret word, Anytime that someone does not have their resume or portfolio, anytime there's number three grammatical errors or number four, which I'll show you here with this one is, um, again, this person is wants to get hired for our video editor position. Uh, let's see, there is no code word here. You can just do command F Adobo. So there's no code word. So that's enough for me to leave. But also number four, what you wanna look out for is if you're hiring for a certain position, that should be in their bio. So you can actually see here, this is their position. So they're an SEO data analyst and a social media specialist. That has nothing to do with video editing or very, very loosely related to video editing. If I wanna hire a video editor, they better be a video editor in their title. A lot of times, and I'll show you another example here. I just wanna show you guys some real examples. So here we go. I want a video editor. So this is the application for the YouTube video editor. What, what is their job title? It's general virtual assistant. So our, I'm gonna have to teach them how to become a video editor. I don't wanna do that. I wanna hire a video editor, if that makes sense. So instead of replying immediately with the links, they sent a separate message with, I guess, uh, links to his work, but not resume or portfolio. So the majority of people you go through, um, they're not gonna be good candidates, right? That's just how hiring works. It's very, very difficult to find good candidates anywhere. It's not about any specific platform. It's not about using free up or online jobs like PH or Fiverr or Upwork or anything like that. Um, it's just difficult period to find good people to work with. So the majority of candidates, you're just going to ignore them. You, you don't need to do anything. You could archive them over here, uh, but I just ignore them. I open, uh, and once you open, then it kind of get, it doesn't go bold anymore. So you kind of know that you've already looked at them. And then what I can do is once I go through all the applicants, I go here under pinned, and then I'll reach out to each one who's pinned and just say, and I'll show you here. So this one's pinned. So here in the message section at the bottom, one additional thing I like to do in order to, again, to not waste my time is to ask some clarifying questions. Because basically, if they fail any of these questions, you're not going to interview this candidate. So what I used to do before is just reach out. Oh, I like this candidate. I'm going to go ahead and interview. No, you want to ask these questions first, because if they fail them, then you don't have to interview them and you don't waste each other's time. So for example, I'll show you how it works. So in the message section, we say, hello, John, thank you for your interest in this position. Before moving forward in the process, I just want to clarify a few things with you. Number one, what is your Wi-Fi speed, right? Is it super slow? Uh, that's a big problem, right? And you, it's very common for virtual assistants on online jobs at PH to actually send you a screenshot to give you proof of their Wi-Fi. Number two, what device do you use for work, right? And they usually should respond with something very, very specific. It's the MacBook S Pro with this gigahertz, giga RAM, whatever, right? Just that kind of whole thing. Number three, are you comfortable? So repeating the question, are you comfortable with the $5 an hour rate, the $10 an hour rate, whatever the rate is, because we've actually had applicants come back and say, oh, actually, could we do $12 an hour instead of 10? Immediately, that's a red flag, because guess what? If I interviewed them, everything went well, and then I start hiring them, they say, hey, Summer, great, I I I'm loving the work so far, but uh, could, I could you give me $12 an hour? Otherwise, I have to leave, right? You definitely don't want to get in that situation, because you're already paying on the higher end, right? And you've already allocated budget for that position and you can't be affording to pay more than that, right? Especially if this happens at scale with all of your virtual assistants, that can be some really big problems in the future. So you'd be surprised. One of the kind of, I guess, stereotypes of Philippine culture is that they are actually very honest. And I found this to be somewhat true. So a lot of times if you ask like, hey, are you comfortable with this rate? They'll tell you like, no, like, like no, I want more. And that's a great red flag. Like, hey, thanks for being honest. I don't want you to work with me because you saw the job description that it was $10 an hour. Now you're asking me for $15 an hour. Like, no, like I, I, I can't do that. So, so you, that's why you're repeating this again. And you'll repeat this multiple times, even in the interview process to make sure it's very, very important, this question here. And then number four is also, again, do you have at least one year of experience? You'd be surprised, right? Everyone who applies, they should be answering yes to all of these. But the reality is once you follow back, let's say you find seven top candidates, two out of the seven, 
uh, very likely will answer no to one of these, either bad Wi-Fi speed, poor device, um, they want more money, or uh, they don't have even at least one year of experience, okay? So what that means is everyone who passes this simple test, let's say it's five out of the seven, those five out of the seven, right? So you send this message, they reply back, okay, great. Then what we'll do is let's say they responded and everything checked out well, um, like John, awesome to hear. Oop, make sure everything's spelled correctly. Awesome to hear. Um, we would love to move you forward to the interview portion of the process. Please select a day and time that works best for you for a 60 minute interview. I go on to insert my Calendly link here. So Calendly is basically a free software that you can use to schedule uh, different kinds of events. So you can kind of create a free account and then just you know dedicate your time. So it's like unavailable, let's say like nine to five, Monday through Friday, um, this next week in Eastern Standard Time. And then each VA is gonna basically choose a 60 minute or one hour block um, for the interview. So anyway, you can do it any way that you want, or you can just say, hey, are you available next Tuesday at this time or whatever, right? But I like to have Calendly. I think that's kind of the best way, most efficient. So we insert the link there. Then what I like to do, as you see here, the interview will be held via Slack chat message. So you can either choose to have, you know, a video interview, which you, especially as an American, you may think, well, of course, that's how we would do it. What I like to do, especially with the Philippines, because remember there are cultural differences, is to have a Slack chat message. So again, you can create a Slack account. I believe you can even create a free account for like 30 days and kind of do it that way. But as you're scaling your business, that's a whole other video, but definitely recommend using Slack, an amazing tool. Ask any, you know, seven, eight figure, nine figure entrepreneur, uh, we love Slack. So the interview will be held via Slack, which is basically like a chat um, messaging platform, kind of like email and text message merge together into kind of like one platform. And what you'll do is create a specific channel for the interview and then go back and forth with them. That's what I like to do. And the reason is number one, I can literally document and see, okay, I asked a question, here's how long it took them to respond. I have all the documentation there. If I ever wanna go back at any point in the future, it's like, wait, didn't we discuss this in an interview? I can go back to the interview because everything's written out like literally as kind of evidence or proof for both parties. So there's that kind of evidence aspect. There's that data that you kind of have of how long did it take to respond? What was the quality of the response? Also, how is their grammar when they're writing? Because we're not going to be communicating all the time via video. It's going to be mostly, you know, email or Slack messages. So how are they with written communication? Um, and then also, number three, the cultural difference is I found that a lot of Filipinos are a bit more camera shy. So if you have a kind of a camera interview, I find they get a little bit more kind of tense up or a little bit more frozen. They tend to be a little bit more relaxed, again, from what I've seen, through Slack messages. So that's for all those reasons why I like to hold it on Slack. And also it shows me, okay, if they've never used Slack before, let's see how quickly they are at getting used to new tools. By the way, if you've never used Slack before, it's a very user-friendly tool. So if there's difficulty using Slack, then maybe there'll be difficulty using some other tools as well. So it's again, it's all of these kind of series of little tests um, that you're running, you know, strategically and honestly with them to make sure that they're the best candidate possible. Okay, so we'd love to move you forward. Please select a 60 minute time here on Calendly at your nearest convenience. The interview will be held via Slack chat message. We look forward to getting to know you better. If you have any questions in the meantime, please don't hesitate to reach out to me here or on email, and then you can input your email and then your name, right? Go ahead and hit send. And basically that's how you set up the interview for your top candidates. At this point, obviously, then it goes away from onlinejobs.ph. You'll interview, let's say at least your top five candidates, select your best candidate, um, let them know that you want to move forward with them. And then after that, what I recommend is once you kind of interview and you've given a job offer to your candidate of choice is to then have another onboarding session anywhere from 30 minutes to 60 minutes, just to where you cover some basic things like, hey, here's like our co company culture. Here's what we expect in terms of how quickly we expect you to respond. I um, just want to confirm you're 100% okay with the pay. Um, we want to get your information so we can set up billing. And in terms of payment, I like to use ping pong payments when paying virtual assistants. I'm just throwing out all these tips for you. So hopefully you find this valuable. But uh, yeah, basically, you know, identifying the tasks that you want to um, outsource uh, and identifying kind of what position you would need to hire for that, creating the actual job description, posting that job description on onlinejobs.ph, filtering your best candidates, interviewing them, then onboarding whoever you kind of want to move forward through just to make sure that everyone's 100% clear 
And once that happens, you're ready to train that virtual assistant anywhere from two weeks to one month of them just training and learning the exact position. And then after that one month period, it could be even two months, but usually one month is enough time, then they'll actually start doing it. So yes, it is quite a lot of process, or it may seem that way, but it is absolutely worth it. Not just worth it, but it is critical if you want to scale your business and if you want to get your time back, because your time is your most valuable resource on this planet. It does not renew. It's way more important than money. I hope you found this video extremely valuable. And if you did, I'm actually considering putting together an affordable Udemy course, walking through the entire process, beginning to end of outsourcing from determining what to outsource and who to outsource to, walking in more depth, not just onlinejobs.ph, but all these other platforms, going through the interview process, the hiring process, a bunch of other free tools and templates, putting them all together into one simplified course. So if you're interested in that, I'll be putting together a simple um, email newsletter. So basically you can sign up with your name and email. And once the course comes live, I'll let you know via email and give you a steep discount. So you can go ahead and sign up for that email newsletter. I'll link that in the description section as well below in case you're interested. And also, if you like this video, then you'll love this video that we have here on the screen and the other videos we have here on the channel. And as always, thank you so much for watching and your support. God bless you and your business and look forward to seeing you in the next one.